Hey guys, what's a crack? My name's Ross. I'm a photographer and video maker from Northern Ireland. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I guess I'm what people would call a hybrid shooter. Basically, a hybrid shooter is somebody who does both photography and video. It doesn't have to be on the same day. For example, some days I'm a photographer only, and other days I'm a videographer only, and other days, other jobs require me to do both photography and video work. So I guess there's two ways you can go about being a hybrid shooter. You either have two sets of gear, like your photography gear and your video gear, and you maybe have two cameras with you at all times. You pull out your main photography camera, take a few photos, you need to take a video, you switch over to your cinema camera or whatever. The other way to be a hybrid shooter and the way that I choose to work is to have one hybrid camera that does both your photography and video, one camera that does it all. Now you might be asking, does that even exist? And that is the, the question that everyone asks. Like every year, new technology comes out and it's like, this is the perfect hybrid camera. Amazing at photography, it's amazing at video. Buy it and it'll be class for both. If you're interested, here's a little bit of background about the gear that I've used um, over the last like 10 years. I started with a 5D Mark III. I used it as a hybrid camera to do both my photography and video work. Then I got a black magic camera. So that became my video camera only. And then my 5D was just my photography camera. And then when Canon brought out their mirrorless systems, I switched over to an R6 and I was like, this camera does it all. But very quickly, I realized the R6 overheated when shooting 4K, which was no good for me. So I looked for a new hybrid camera to replace it. This time last year, I bought the camera I'm filming on right now, the Fujifilm X-H2S. The R6 is like a nine or 10 out of 10 for photography, but only about like a five or six out of 10 for video. The Fujifilm X-H2S I'm filming on right now, it's almost like the other way around. So it's been incredible for video over the last year, but it's just kind of fallen short a few times for photography, like missed focus, and I've just really missed the full frame sensor of the R6 shooting photographs with the Fujifilm X-H2S. So you might be wondering, although probably not because of the title of this video, basically I bought myself a new camera. I obviously have it with me here to show you. So with this Panasonic Lumix S52X, I'm hoping that it's better at video than the R6, the Canon R6, and better at photography than the Fujifilm X-H2S and just an overall great camera for both video and photography. So I only need to bring one camera with me on all the shoots that I'm required to do, photos or video or both. Does that make sense? In this video, I want to outline 10 reasons why I bought the Panasonic Lumix S52X, other than it being absolutely beautiful. Although I've said that about every camera I've ever bought. The first reason why I bought this camera was for the full frame sensor. The Fujifilm X-H2S is obviously incredible for video, but I've just really missed having the full frame sensor that I have on the R6 camera. So this S52X has a full frame sensor, which you can use to shoot photos and video, which I'm really excited about. The second main reason I've decided to switch over to this system actually isn't anything to do with the camera itself but the lenses that go on it. I don't know them all, but you've got the 18, 24, 35, 50, 85. They are all this size here. Like this is an 85 mil F1.8 lens. So small, so compact for a full frame lens. I've taken a few photographs with it at 1.8 and it is like incredibly sharp. There's basically no focus breathing at all. And you can tell the camera body to read the lenses as if they were like linear focus motors. So that really helps when manually focusing, which I do basically all the time for video. I've got the 50 and the 85. I'm probably gonna order the 18 as well. Another really cool thing about this series of lenses is they all share the same thread size. So you can buy like one mist filter and screw it on to one of them and you don't need to worry about an adapter or buying multiple thread sizes for your filters. The third main reason I went for this camera is because of its dual native ISO. So you have native ISO of 640 and then you have a second native ISO when you get to 4000 ISO. Nobody likes noisy footage, especially for me for like weddings when I'm filming indoors. I've got these 1.8 lenses which are bright anyway, but I can stick the ISO at 4000 
and not see any noise. I've shot some footage in the few days that I've had this camera at 640 ISO and it is clean as a whistle, but I suppose 640 you'd expect it to be pretty clean. I'll have to take it out at night and really test out that second native ISO setting of 4000, but I'm so glad it has it. So the fourth reason why I bought this camera, and this is like ridiculous, I know people in the comments are gonna go wild about this, that like, how could this be a reason that you'd buy a camera? But honestly, when you don't have this feature, your videos aren't as good. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically I'll tell you what it is. It's to be able to monitor an aspect ratio that you choose on the screen as you're shooting. So I'll just show you, I have this back button set to display my aspect ratio 235. So if I press it, you'll see up comes the black bars. You can have 16 by nine, four, three, five, four, one to one. I output all my wedding videos, 2.35. So I've got the function button set to display 235. It just saves so much time in editing, but I still have the tops and bottoms to play with of the 6K or 4K footage. So the fifth main reason I bought this camera is because of all of its focus settings. So you have this little dial on the back, the same one that you have on the front of Fujifilm cameras here, and it goes from single focus to continuous to manual focus, which is really handy to have with your thumb here. As an example, you flick it to continuous, and then you press this button in the middle, and it shows all of your autofocus modes, and you've got so many there. You've got tracking, full area, zone, area plus, one area, pinpoint, you got so many different focus modes. If you're a hybrid shooter and you shoot lots and lots of different things like I do, it's so, so handy to have loads of different focus options for different shooting scenarios. So the next reason why I bought this camera is because of the stabilization within the Panasonic S52X. It's absolutely incredible. I've only used this for a couple of days and already I can just see how amazing this stabilization inside the camera body is. And you have lots of different modes. So you've got just the standard like in-body stabilization. It has another mode where if you're doing like a panning shot, it locks it top and bottom and just lets you pan without any sort of jitters. I think it might have like a tilting one as well. It also has boost mode, just like the Fujifilm X-H2S, which I use a ton. It's basically to emulate the look of a tripod. So yeah, the stabilization inside this S52X is absolutely incredible and I can't wait to test it out even more. Okay, reason number seven why I bought this camera is because of the build quality and ergonomics. It feels incredible in your hand. And I've probably said that about every camera I've ever bought, but this thing here, like the little lip for your finger is so comfortable. The grip on this camera is great. Some people have said that their baby finger hangs off the bottom, but mine doesn't, mine, mine sits perfectly. What I really like as well is that because there's a built-in fan here, the viewfinder sticks out a little bit. I was finding with my Fujifilm X. 2S, my nose was like smooshing up against the screen when I was holding it to my face. Another really cool thing about the viewfinder on this camera is that they've moved the little like eye sensor, you know, to move uh, the image from here to here. They've moved it from the bottom to the top. So if you're using your finger on the LED screen down here, you're not like accidentally triggering the eye sensor to switch it to the viewfinder. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about the build quality as well. Like I think the build quality, it feels really, really sturdy, this camera. One thing I would say, and loads of people have said online, the dials move very, very easily. Some people like that, would prefer that. Some people want a bit of resistance. Maybe the buttons could do with a little bit of stiffening up, a few like harder clicks or something. But yeah, all in all, I think the build quality is really, really good. Yes, another thing to note is the battery life on this camera is really, really good. I haven't set it up and recorded myself for like an hour shooting like 6K with like eye tracker, like I'm doing with the X-H2S right now. Also, this camera has a fan. Maybe the fan, if it's needed, might drain the battery a little bit quicker. I'm not so sure. My next reason why I bought this camera, I think I've lost track of the numbers. I think we're on number eight or something. You can load your own LUTs into this camera for either baking into your vlog footage or just for monitoring on the back of your camera or your monitor if you're using an external monitor. Some people online don't like the conversion LUT from Panasonic itself. I saw a lot of people chatting about the Gamut IO LUT. So that's the one that I have bought and loaded into the camera to monitor my vlog footage. Maybe there's a way to convert a Lightroom preset 
into a LUT and then use it to shoot JPEGs. I don't know if you can do that or not. I'm definitely gonna test that out and see because if that's true, that's a real game changer. It's always scary when you're changing your camera system. There can be a real steep learning curve. All the settings have different names and everything's in a different place. But I have found the menus with this Panasonic camera really intuitive, really easy to get my head around. If you are planning to buy this camera or you've just bought one, something really cool you can do, you hit menu. And if you wanna find out what a setting does, you just hit display. Up pops a little like info box. It basically describes what each setting does on the camera. It makes sense. Everything in this camera makes sense. On the same point of the menus being really good, the function settings, so like changing what every button does is awesome on this camera. I thought the Fujifilm X-H2S was incredible for that, but this camera I think has even more options that you can have. So here we are, the 10th reason why I bought the Panasonic Lumix S52X and it's basically a bunch of reasons rolled into one. But the first is that it has a blacked out design. So they've taken all the white off this camera. So the white on the dials of the S52, they've taken off. So this camera is full like stealth mode. If you saw this camera from a distance, someone shooting with it, you wouldn't be able to tell what camera it was. Maybe it's a Northern Irish thing, I don't know. But every single shoot I do, someone's walking up to you and they're like, oh, that's the, the Canon, the Canon EOS. Five, 5D, I've actually got 100D myself now, so I do. This camera here, they'll just be like, oh yeah, I don't know what camera he's using there. So having these fans is really good. You know, they keep the sensor cool. This body is still weather resistant or maybe they say splash resistant, but it's meant to be rugged enough to uh, withstand a good amount of harsh weather, which a camera really needs to do when you're shooting in Ireland. It's like one of the wettest places on earth here. It's not wet today though, it's really sunny today. So there you go, there's my 10 main reasons why I bought this camera. If those 10 reasons didn't satisfy you, here's a few more. As with all technology and all cameras, especially all hybrid cameras, there are certain like trade-offs that you have to make, you know, you have to weigh up the pros against the cons and this camera does have a few cons. The number one downside for me uh, about this camera is that you cannot shoot 4K slow motion with the full size of the sensor with this camera. When you're shooting 4K, 50 frames a second, 50p, the camera applies a APS-C size crop. I honestly don't feel that for me, like for my work, the work that I do, having that crop on the footage is really gonna make me hate this camera. Ask me in a year when I'm buying a completely different camera because I hate the APS-C crop and slow motion 4K footage, but right now, I don't think it's gonna be too much of an issue. Another downside to this camera is that the camera itself doesn't have a low pass filter in it. A low pass filter is something you really want for video because it takes out that digital sharpness and reduces moir. Is that the word moir or moire or something? You know, like if you're taking a shot of a building and there's roof tiles and you're getting that really horrible like mesh, the camera just can't deal with all the lines being close together. Maybe the likes of like a mist filter will help to bring down the digital sharpness, but who knows, let's see. Finally, the last downside to this camera is the rolling shutter. You know, when you're doing a panning shot or you're filming something like out of a window that's flying past, and the lamp posts are meant to be like this, but you get the shot back and they're like this. The rolling shutter on this camera is pretty terrible. The effects of the rolling shutter do decrease a lot when you crop into the sensor and shoot on APS-C mode, which is really handy to know. But yeah, if you're using the full size of the sensor, the rolling shutter is pretty bad. So there you have it. The sun's setting on me here at Orlock Point, which is where I made my first video announcing that I bought the Fujifilm X-H2S. Here I am almost a year later saying I've replaced it with the Lumix S52X. I am really, really excited to take this camera out over the next few months and really test it out and um, share the results with you guys on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are in the world, I hope we have a great day and I'll see you in another video soon, probably featuring this camera. Bye.
the what are we on four we're gonna lose that sunshine one two three four we're gonna lose the sun it's setting on my face the sun's kind of go going 